Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Dr. Tapati's presentation. Myself, Dr. Tapati Vanjade. Recently, I have started a lecture series on enzyme. In unit 1, I have given an introduction to enzyme. I have discussed about properties on enzyme and factors affecting enzyme activity. Today, I am going to discuss about enzyme substrate interaction and history of enzyme. This is unit 2. Before you start unit 2, you should watch unit 1 for better understanding. First of all, enzyme substrate interaction or mechanism of enzyme catalysis. In my last lecture, I have already discussed about different properties of enzymes. Enzymes are proteinaceans in nature except ribozyme. It increases the rate of the biochemical reaction by lowering activation energy of the catalyzed reaction. Enzymes do not alter reaction equilibrium and enzymes are substrate specific. In a biochemical reaction, the making and breaking of chemical bonds by an enzyme proceed by formation of an enzyme substrate complex. This is a schematic diagram for an uh, enzymatic reaction where E stands for enzyme and uh, S stands for substrate. First of all, uh, enzyme substrate complex is formed Already in my last video, I have mentioned that substrate is bound to a specific region of the enzyme which is called active site of the enzyme. After enzyme substrate complex, uh, product is formed. After completion of the reaction, product comes out of the active site region of the enzyme because shape and size of the product is completely different from the uh, shape of the active site of the enzyme. Two models are proposed for the interaction of enzyme and substrate. First one is lock and key model and second one is induced fit model. First of all, we will discuss about lock and key hypothesis. German chemist Emil Fischer in 1984 proposed lock and key hypothesis. According to this hypothesis, enzyme specificity results from the complementary nature of substrate and its active site. A key of the correct shape and size fits into the keyhole of the lock Similarly, a substrate with correct shape and size fits into the active site of the enzyme. Here we can imagine key as substrate and keyhole as active site of the enzyme. We can understand lock and key hypothesis through these diagrams. Only key one can open this lock, this lock because shape and size of the uh, key one is well fitted with the keyhole of the lock whereas key two can't open this lock because it is not complementary to the keyhole of the lock so uh, only lock uh, lock and key one uh, complex formation can be possible similarly Substrate A only uh, can bind with the uh, with this enzyme, but not the substrate B because the shape and size is completely different from this active site region of the enzyme. Therefore, enzyme and substrate A complex formation is only possible, not enzyme and substrate B complex. Now understand enzyme substrate interaction according to lock and key hypothesis. The substrate binds to the enzyme primarily through hydrogen bonding and other electrostatic 
interactions. This uh, substrate is complementary to the active site of this enzyme. Hence, first of all, enzyme substrate complex formation will be occurred. Then, enzyme product uh, enzyme and product complex formation. And shape and size of the product is completely different from the substrate. So, it is not complementary to active site of the enzyme and therefore it will come out of the active site and enzyme remains unaltered. According to this model, conformation of the enzymes is rigid and able to bond only to substrates which exactly fit in the active site. There will be no structural there will be no structural change of the active site during enzyme substrate complex formation. Let's talk about induced fit model. Lock and key hypothesis was established think, thinking that enzymes are rigid. However, when structure of the enzymes are thoroughly studied by X-ray crystallography, it found that structures of enzymes are not rigid but are in fact quite flexible in shape. In 1958, Daniel Koshland extended Daniel Koshland extended Fisher ideas and proposed this induced fit model. According to this model, the enzyme molecule changes its shape slightly to accommodate the substrate. According to lock and key model, there was no change in the enzyme molecule. But according to induced feed model, there will be change in the shape of the enzyme molecule. But the change is very less. It is also known as hand in glove model where the hand and glove are broadly complementary in shape but the glove is molded around the hand as it is inserted in order to provide a perfect match. Let's understand enzyme substrate interaction according to induced feed model through this uh, diagram you can see that after binding with substrate active site structure is slightly changed to best fit with the substrate structure here uh, groups of enzyme are squeezed as compared to the uh, original size of the active site in the original form it was quite wide but in case of enzyme substrate complex the groups are squeezed this is the enzyme product complex after catalysis the enzyme resumes its original structure that is the active sites are again wider as products um, shape and size is uh, shape and size are uh, different from the active side of the enzyme so product will be removed from the active site now you can ask that if substrate binds only at the active site then what is the utility of other parts of the enzyme Answer is it stabilizes the active site and it provides appropriate environment for enzyme substrate interaction. Therefore, we can say that we can say that whole part of the enzyme essential for the enzyme activity. Nowadays, 
although scientists are trying to make artificial enzyme focusing on mainly the active site region of the enzyme they are mainly called abzyme we will discuss about that in the next video let's know about the history of enzyme the earliest known references to enzymes are from ancient texts dealing with the production of cheese bread alcohol beverages and tendering of meat the digestion of meat by stomach secretions and conversion of starch to sugars by plant extracts and saliva were known before 18th century but the mechanisms were not uh, mechanisms were not clear in 1833 penny and parsons discovered the first enzyme that is diastase which is a mixture of amylases which is required for starch to glucose conversion in 1850 louis pasteur found that fermentation of sugar to alcohol is catalyzed by yeast cells he named it ferments so louis pasteur named it as ferment in 1876 the term enzyme that means in yeast or living cells was given by w f kuhne he also believed that fermenting ability was associ associated with yeast whereas in 1984 emil fischer performed an experiment on carbohydrates and established the lock and key hypothesis to describe the specific interaction of enzyme with substrate in 1897 edward buchner showed that a dead yeast extract could carry out the same fermentation reaction like living yeast cells in 1926 jb shamner isolated purified and crystallized the enzyme ureas enzyme ureas from jack beans he reported that enzymes are pure protein as he found ureas crystals are purely made of proteins German biochemist Richard Wilstetter opposed it and said that enzymes are low molecular weight organic compounds and the protein proteins crystals were found in the ureas preparation could be impurities later in 1930 John Northrop and his colleagues crystallized pepsin and trypsin they found that they were also proteins protein nature of the enzyme was finally universally accepted in 1958 daniel koshland discovered the induced fit model in 1964 taylor made synthetic enzymes synzymes was first synthesized in laboratory by R B Marfield in 1965 high resolution x-ray crystal structure was determined by David Phillips in 1962 and 67 with the discovery of restriction enzymes and ligases R Arbor and Geller opened the path for new branch of science that is biotechnology in 1986 alexander rich and thomas kids group found that certain rna molecules 
also exhibited catalytic properties like enzyme those are called ribozyme before that it was known that enzymes are only proteins in 1996 am smith developed site directed mitogenesis technique site directed mitogenesis technique developed by am smith to develop mutant enzyme by precisely manipulating the genes of the enzyme thank you very much for watching this video kindly like share and subscribe this channel for further notification don't forget to press the bell icon